My name is Jen Walker Wall. I'm the founder of Work Wonders Careers. I know that 2020 has been an incredibly difficult year, and that's why I'm excited to bring you the stories of our clients who've managed to land jobs during this difficult time. I've interviewed three clients for the series. One is a parent, one has had to pivot her career after her industry was deeply impacted, and one is a former business owner who's transitioned successfully into traditional employment. And they've all landed offers between May and September of 2020. My hope is that you will be inspired by their stories and that you will listen to the lessons that they've learned about what's helped them to be standout candidates even when so many people are actively job seeking. Our next interview in the series is with Joanna. Joanna was working in the travel industry, which was obviously deeply impacted by the pandemic. We helped her use her resume to pivot into an industry where she didn't have any existing contacts and generate job interviews just from her resume. So I'm really excited for you to learn how you can manage your resume if you need to make a similar kind of pivot. I can't wait to hear what you think of the interview. Thank you so much for watching today and thank you for joining us, Joanna. I'm so happy to be to have you here today um, and sharing a little bit of your job search story with us. So to get us started, do you want to share a little bit about who you are and your professional interests? Yeah, absolutely. So um, my name is Joanna Foltis. I work remotely, um, even in normal times in Sonoma County, California. Um, for the past seven years, I've been working for service providers in the travel and international education realm. Um, most recently, I was the commercial manager for a travel management company um, that specializes in planning and operating short-term global programs for American universities. Um, and it was a pretty ideal job for me in a lot of ways. Um, I was able to travel the world. I was with the company for quite a while, so I was very settled and comfortable and um, you know, pretty well established. Um, most importantly, I was, I was in the field that I wanted to be in, and, and happily so. Um, and then COVID hit, and uh, almost overnight, international travel and, and programming was indefinitely on hold. Yeah, and so can you share a little bit about, so you were furloughed and then you experienced a layoff. So you knew you had to be looking for a job. Can, so there's a lot of people in that boat right now. So can you share a little bit about what your job search looked like um, or, or looked like over the course of that time since it probably evolved a little bit? Yeah, for sure. So, um, I mean, as you, would expect my, my company and really the entire travel industry was hit incredibly hard and almost immediately all bookings from March 2020 forward just evaporated <laughs> like in no time. Um, so pretty much the way it happened was pretty much all my coworkers were, were laid off in April. Um, I was lucky enough to get to, to stay on for a couple more months because of a, a PPP loan. So there was a, a brief furlough before that then brought back for, for PPP. Um, but once those funds ran out, I, I was unfortunately laid off as well. Um, and my initial reaction was to freak out a little bit. Um, you know, not only had I I'd lost a job that I, I loved because of this very surreal scenario that was completely outside of my control, um, but I also was coming to the realization that I didn't really have a backup plan. Um, and my husband and I had also just bought a house. So that was a, a special kind of stress that I hadn't experienced before. Um, but yeah, pretty quickly it became clear to me that there weren't any job openings in international ed or travel and, and there weren't going to be for a while. Um, so it definitely took some, I guess, some like mental gymnastics to A, you know, accept the fact that I needed to pivot um, and B, to, you know, figure out what exactly I would be qualified and would be interested in pivoting to. Um, so the first, you know, once I came to all those realizations that I'd say the first really constructive step I took um, was to just take some time to you know, reflect and kind of think about where else my experience and skill set um, could be useful. So, you know, for the past five years, I worked as a, a travel provider for university clients. So I figured that um, a lot of my skills could be transferable to, you know, in administrative roles within higher education. Um, so that was definitely the big kind of like aha moment 
for me and became my jumping off point for an active search. When you and I first spoke, you had identified yeah. um, higher ed as a target. And so maybe you can um, tell the people who are watching, what changes did you make to your resume to help you get traction? Because we were just talking before we hit record, you did get traction using your resume. Like you didn't know anyone on the other side of the hiring table. Uh, you used your resume to make this pivot pretty quickly, all things considered. Yeah. Yeah. So to kind of back up a little bit to how I came to that kind of pivotal point for me. Um, you know, as I was getting my, my job hunt started, the, the first thing I did, I, I, I had to like dig out my resume. It unfortunately had not had like any attention since probably 2015 or so. So, um, you know, I added my, my latest job experience and I made a few other kind of cursory updates. Um, but then I called it good at first. And, um, you know, along with that, I, you know, I developed a, a cover letter template that I could easily tweak and, and build upon as I applied to jobs. Um, and then as to the job hunt itself, sorry, this kind of speaks to your earlier question about what my initial hunt looked like. But um, as for the, the job hunt itself, I, I, you know, I signed up for, for job alerts. I connected with my network, but mostly just for, for brainstorming purposes. I didn't really, I didn't know anybody at the, at the places that I was applying to. Um, and I also set up kind of a, a loose schedule for myself to, to make sure I was devoting, you know, focused time to job hunting each day. Um, for me, you know, I felt like a couple hours most weekdays was, was manageable and, and productive. Um, and then when I found jobs to apply to, I would always spend, you know, a good chunk of time customizing my cover letter based, you know, based on the specific organization and, and position. Um, but I would send my resume as is um, without making any adjustments. Um, and because at that point, I didn't realize that there were edits I, I should have been making to my resume as well. So then um, that's where you came in. So to actually speak to your, uh, to your latest question, um, by the time I'd met with you, I had already you know, zeroed in on the types of jobs that I wanted to be applying for. Um, so I had, you know, I had a goal in mind already and I had a good search strategy in place and, and I was finding postings that I was excited about. Um, but I really wasn't getting any traction for the first few months. Um, so I reached out to you primarily because I just wanted to make sure that my employment materials um, were, you know, I was on the right track with those. Um, and I am insanely glad I did because that ended up being kind of the, the crucial turning point moment for me. Um, you know, through our conversation, I realized that my resume actually my resume in particular really left a lot to be desired. You know, my, my experience and my skills were solid, but I wasn't communicating them um, in the most effective way possible. Um, so the, the, the first thing that needed to happen for me was that my, my formatting needed to be completely overhauled. Um, you know, my, my old document was, was over-designed with columns and, I, you know, unnecessary icons and, um, and other things like that. And all of that was actually making it, um, it was really distracting for the reader I learned. <laughs> um, so what I needed to do was, was clean it up and simplify it in order to make it more readable and to draw attention to the, the content, which, you know, is the, the most important thing. Um, and until this point, I really had no idea how important formatting, uh, formatting of a resume was. Um, but once the rationale was explained to me, it, you know, it made complete sense. So the next and biggest adjustment that I needed to make to my resume was to add a summary of qualifications. Um, and that was a new concept for me. So I did find it, if I'm being honest, I found it a little daunting at first. It seemed like a lot of work. <laughs> um, but once I got the, once I got the gist of it through, you know, talking to you and looking at, at samples online and doing research, um, I realized how useful of a tool it really is. So I started making that a priority, um, you know, a priority of my application process. So 
from that point forward, whenever I applied to a new job, in addition to tweaking my cover letter, I also spent a, a pretty good amount of time editing my resume. Um, you know, not only by, by customizing the, the summary of qualifications, but I also realized that I should be adjusting my, my job experience bullet points in order to, to highlight the functions that, you know, most relevant to the job I was applying to. So, um, and I think overall this process, um, these tweaks that I made made a huge difference um, and allowed me to stand out because once I started taking these steps, that's when I finally started getting some, some positive responses. So that was a big relief. <laughs> so you've said so many things that I just want to highlight for anyone who's yeah. watching. One is it's really not uncommon for people to have to like literally dig around for a resume they haven't looked at in a long time. <laughs> so, and what you did makes so much sense. Update it, like make sure it's up to date, right? Like that's really fundamentally a first step a lot of people can take and they, they make working on their resume a very ambiguous task when in fact like that's a great place for your resume to be is up to date um and then you know getting some being able to hone in on roles and even though you were in a job that you really enjoyed and like weren't planning on leaving like landing a new job was not on your 2020 bingo sheet right no it wasn't um and so i i think it's so so helpful for people to hear that you can have a job that you enjoy and also find a job that you're excited to apply for because i think that process is so hard for so many people uh, normally i work with people who like can't wait to leave their job and then so this year it's been a lot of people who have really mixed feelings or are feeling a lot of grief about having to make a pivot and the other thing that i'll just say is that the summary of qualifications is work it's it's something you can get a lot better at doing, but what it really enables you to do is to be so much more flexible with your experience. So instead of just positioning you as an expert in the travel industry, we were really unable able to unpack and showcase all of your higher ed experience by making some very, very small changes. But I think a lot of people try to make the tiny changes first when in fact the structure, the formatting, the storytelling like actually is a, co it's a cohesive strategy at the end of the day. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like I said, that, that phone call with you was, was the turning point for me. And that's, that's when I started, once I made those edits, that's when I started seeing results. So I'm proof that it, you know, it's worth it. <laughs> proof that it works. <laughs> I will also say for anyone watching, you picked up the strategy a lot more quickly than other people. So I always say... <laughs> Practice, practice, and practice before you're ready. If you're watching this and you're not in an er sense of urgency, it's okay to just practice writing these um, and, and getting better because you will get better and become more efficient at, at telling your story, but you only get that way through practice first. So Joanna, can you share a little bit, um, I'm asking people to share, you know, how the pandemic and other events, relevant events of 2020 have impacted both your work and your job search. I mean, you mentioned that you were already remote, so did things feel steady for you or were there other challenges that you were, other challenges, you know, like your industry imploding or the fact that you just bought a house? <laughs> what, what else was kind of on your mind or impacting your, your process? Yeah, I mean, definitely I felt a lot of, of pressure because, you know, my husband and I just bought this house literally right before, you know, in we moved in in February, so, um, for the first time we had a mortgage payment and then my, I kind of saw the writing on the wall with, um, back, I would say in, in February, back when, um, it was mostly Asian countries being, being affected, or so we thought mostly Asian countries being affected. So a lot of our Asia trips were being canceled. So I kind of had a feeling that this was going to become a, a more widespread kind of industry wide issue. Um, but so I, I knew that there was kind of trouble ahead for me. My husband was also furloughed for a few months. And so for the first time we had this very serious pressure to figure out, um, you know, we had a, a financial situation <laughs> on our hands. And so I kind of felt an, an urgency to a figure out what my backup plan was. You know, I, I felt like I didn't have a lot of time to really think everything through and then kind of put together this, this whole new plan about how to get there. So it was definitely, um, there was kind of that, that additional stress that, you know, job hunting is, is always stressful. It's never, at least to me, it's never a particularly fun process. Um, but then to have all these external factors, these very like real world, big picture factors kind of pushing in definitely made it, it harder. And so, um, I would say that, that making us 
kind of jumping ahead a little bit to what advice I would, I would give people. But for me, kind of creating that, creating a routine and a structure around the job hunt um, that really helped me a lot. Like I said, I am not somebody that really enjoys job hunting anyway. <laughs> um, and so it can be hard to motivate. So putting a structure in place, like I said, kind of devoting a few hours a day to the job hunt process or, you know, whether that was searching or updating my materials or actually applying, that really helped me stay focused and, um, and to hold myself accountable. So that was, that was a tool that really helped me deal with stress and uncertainty. Yeah, I think a lot of us rely on like structure and routine <laughs> yeah. to, to compartmentalize for a little bit. And I love, there's another couple of things that you said here is that you did have a sense of urgency. And I think it's so important. People think that when they have a sense of urgency, that the best strategy is to apply everywhere, like send the same resume all over the place. And what I think gets people traction the most is actually still being focused. Like just because there's a sense of urgency doesn't mean that you don't have a better chance of getting a job sooner if you're not strategic uh, with your time and with your efforts and the roles that you're targeting and the way you're communicating. So I love that you shared that with us. Um, and in addition to the routine, or is there any other advice that you might share with people who are job seeking or other people like people who work in travel or hospitality or other industries that have been deeply impacted? Yeah, I mean, like I, I kind of alluded to earlier, the, the, the turning point for me was um, figuring out that my materials really needed to be kind of overhauled and, and adjusted um, more than I had realized in the past. Um, and so I would say making it a priority to customize your materials for, you know, really for each and every application, um, it's a big deal. And, and it, it can seem a little well, no, it is time consuming at first. <laughs> it doesn't seem that way. It actually is. Um, but once you get, like you said, once you get the hang of it, um, it does become much easier. And like I said earlier, it's, it's 100% worth the effort. It, it was not until I reformatted, reformatted my resume, added the summary of qualifications, started um, customizing other components of the resume. That was when I started getting traction. So um, it, you know, that's, it's very clear to me now how important that step is. So I would say that's, that's number one, in addition to kind of putting a, a structure and a routine in place. Um, and then I think the other kind of more abstract uh, piece of advice I would give um, is just to, you know, be kind to yourself. Um, sounds kind of cheesy, but you know, for the, the first couple of months, like I said, I, I really wasn't hitting on really actually any traction with my applications and I was being really hard on myself um, about it and kind of doubting my qualifications. Um, but I think it's important to recognize, um, you know, even in normal times of <laughs> job hunting takes time, but, um, right now we are living through such, I mean, just utterly bizarre times. And so everything is more challenging these days and, you know, including, and I would say, especially job hunting. But, um, what I experienced, and I was very pleasantly surprised to see that places are hiring um, and it's, it is entirely possible to get a really great new job. I'm, I'm super excited for the position that I'm about to start tomorrow. Um, so this, this is all possible. It just might take a little bit longer than you would like. So, you know, in the meantime, I think just sticking with it and you know, not giving up um, and then also just not beating yourself up. Um, if you don't get, you know, an immediate response to an application. Um, and then I think also just this was kind of key for me, just allowing yourself time and space to like take a little break and recharge if you're starting to feel burnt out. Um, you know, job hunting is, for me at least, it was just as exhausting as like a normal job. It, it was work. Um, so it was important that I, when I started feeling frustrated, to kind of step away from from my little, my computer, my little job hunt zone and just give myself time to kind of recharge and re-motivate. Absolutely. So consistency, self-compassion and rest. Yes. I just want to 100% co-sign that those are all really, I always think of them as like the foundation of a successful job search mm -hmm. uh, because it's not a 40 hour a week job. You know, if you're being strategic and focused, like, you know, a, a 20 minutes here, a couple hours there, really 
goes a very long way. And that mm -hmm. leaves time for rest. Uh, and we can't take, especially job searching this year out of the context of this year, which is, yeah, truly bizarre and full of turmoil and challenging times for many, many people. So I'm so grateful that you shared your story with us um, because I think it's gonna inspire a lot of people to keep going and know that a new opportunity is ahead. So thank you so much. Good luck tomorrow. Let us know how that new job goes. You will. Thank you so much. And thank you for, for taking the time to help me. That was that was really pivotal in my process. Oh, so I appreciate it, Jen. <laughs> my pleasure. Thank you thank so much. You.